Just a brief warning, there will be spoilers ahead. I will be discussing up to episode 7 of Castle Rock. Hello ladies and gentlemen, guys and ghouls. My name's Kevin and welcome to my channel, The Art of Horror. Today I will be drawing for you an alien from the Tommy Knockers TV series based on the novel by Stephen King. I will also be discussing some of my own personal theories from the television series Castle Rock. A lot of these will be my own personal theories of what I think is going on in the series. The first theory I would actually like to discount is the fact that I'm seeing a lot of people saying Bill Skarsgård's character, the kid, is actually Pennywise the Clown. And I think this couldn't be further from the truth. So I could be extremely wrong, but it is so much fun speculating with this show as it's the mystery surrounding this television series that keeps sucking me in. The first theory I would like to discuss is why is the kid's shoulder hunched slightly? I think the answer to this is pretty obvious, though once again I could be wrong. The kid has been locked in a cage for quite a number of years and I'm pretty sure he's been sitting in the same position in the corner for the entire time. The effect of being stuck in such a confined horrible area has given him sclerosis, stiffening up and locking his joints. The next point I would like to discuss is whether or not the kid is an innocent or evil. It's my personal opinion that whilst he comes across as quite innocent, I think he knows exactly the cause and effect that he has upon people and his surroundings. Almost taking a gleeful approach to the chaos that he is causing. This can be seen when he walks into a strange family's house during a birthday party, whilst unseen by the family, and goes and sits upon their roof, watching over the town of Castle Rock while all hell breaks loose below him, without concern. The next point I would like to bring up is whether or not Ruth, played by Sissy Spacek, actually knows the kid. The warden, Dale Lacey, played by Terry O'Quinn, tells the kid to seek out Henry Deaver. And while we are still unsure why he asked him to seek out Henry Deaver, is it because he has some connection to Henry's family, or is it because the kid knows what happened to Henry all those years ago in his childhood? I'm not sure Ruth actually knows the kid, but it seems more likely to me that he has the ability to read people's minds and thoughts and possibly exploit that to his own ends. I've heard it discussed that the kid could have actually been Ruth's own child who passed away years ago, but this to me doesn't seem to make any sense. I've also heard it discussed that he could be Ruth's husband somehow time traveling but we have seen earlier iterations of Ruth's husband, himself not that much older than Bill Skarsgård's character, and there does not seem to be a resemblance between the two. I do feel that he's seeked out Ruth's weakness, which of course is her Alzheimer's, and has exploited this to do away with his biggest threat, Alan Pangborn. I feel she was manipulated into murdering her husband. This brings me to my next question. Why did Sheriff Alan Pangborn and Dale Lacey not just simply do away with the kid if he was such a threat that they had to lock him in a deep, dark hole? It would seem to me to be a lot easier option just to murder him and have it over and done with. My theory here is if you directly threaten this character, the chaos becomes worse. I think if you were to pull a gun on him, you'd probably end up turning it upon yourself very quickly. So locking the kid in the hole is not a direct threat to him and was probably the safest option at the time. This moves on to my next question, which is why Warden Dale Lacey seemed to be fascinated with the kid, obviously spending hundreds if not thousands of hours watching him in the cage whilst smoking cigarettes and listening to music. Now here's where I think things get really weird. I still think the kid is a conglomeration of who we know of in the Stephen King novels as the Walking Dude or Randall Flagg, or even the Devil himself. But who's to say that what we perceive as this immortal who can twist reality around him 
is not of extraterrestrial origin. Which now brings me around to what is the schisma? In the novel of the Tommy Knockers, the buried alien spacecraft gives off a vibration, a sound, which is more sensitive to some people than to others. The closer you get to it and the more you uncover it, the stronger this sound or vibration gets. It also has a negative effect upon all those surrounding it. I've heard it said that the older deaf man that's wandering around with his interpreter is possibly a future version of Henry. While this could be possible, I'm not so sure it is, as it creates that time-traveling conundrum of the same person existing in the same place at the same time. While interdimensionality is a possible cause, I just think these two people are attracted to the schisma. It would also mean if it was Henry in the future, he would have to stop being a lawyer and become a university professor, which the traveler said he is. And whilst Henry is an extremely practical lawyer, he is not a scientifically based person, especially surrounding theoretics. Henry only seems to believe what he can see, hear and touch. A small part of him believes that Molly may be psychic, but a larger part of him thinks that she is mentally ill still. I think if the kid was innocent, I don't think the energy surrounding him would be so negative. But I do believe he could be a victim of circumstance. We see this in real life with a lot of serial killers, where they know what they are doing is extremely wrong, but they cannot help themselves. So I'm not sure if I've actually helped or hindered you guys with any of these theories. I've been trying not to look into the Easter eggs too much, as I almost think the producers of the show have put a lot of them in there as red herrings. Fun ones at that. If you have any theories of your own, please leave them in the comments below. I love to hear them. I can't wait for episode 8 this week. There's something about this show that just draws me right in. And like I said, if I'm wrong with any of these theories, please don't be harsh on me. They are just theories and they are just my own ideas. I wholly admit that I could be way off base with any of this stuff. This image of a Tommy Knocker alien took me around two hours. It's charcoals on watercolor paper. And I drew it because I am starting to get this vibe that there's some sort of alien connection within this show. If you're new to my channel and you would like to see more videos like this, please feel free to hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you see any new videos that arise. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button as well. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Kevin for The Art of Horror. Until next time, goodbye from me.